Bulubunaka, welcome to Simpson at 8. This week we take you to the village of Narikoso on the island of Ono in Kandavu and we bring you a story about climate change relocation, a reality facing many villages in Fiji today. You may have heard of the successful relocation of Wulindongolo village in Dakonrave in Vunolevu, but tonight is a story of relocation that has not gone so well and the important lessons we can learn from it. Coming to 2010, they started to talk about in the village meeting, eh? when all these things have been changing, like the series and level has been coming up uh, a bit, but uh, they never discussed about the moving. Uh, they just been discussing about building seawall. Narikoso on the island of Ono in Kandavu is among several villages in Fiji where relocation projects are taking place due to the effects of sea level rise and climate change. Fiji has positioned itself as a leader on climate change, leading efforts to try to get global action to reduce carbon emissions and create a more environment-friendly world. There have been successful relocation projects in Fiji, including the pioneering relocation of Wunindongoloa in Vanua Levu. But relocation has not been an easy decision and process. And I came to Narikoso to find out more about an ongoing project that has struggled to be completed since 2012, for almost eight years. We arrived in Narikoso two months after the area had been hit by a devastating Cat 4 cyclone, TC Herald and as the villagers were rebuilding from the devastation. <coughs> Narikoso is led by its chief, the Tui Ravi Ravi, a woman, Bulo Katarina. After presenting our Sevu Sevu, we asked the villagers to tell us their story. <laughs> In 2012, uh, during the uh, Prime Minister's of USL visit to Narikoso, uh, we, were, we were having a meeting with this uh, development committee. The, we were first having this meeting in my house. During that meeting, it was a big high tide on that time. That is why I want to take all this development committee meeting into my house so that we can discuss about this thing that's been going on, that they can see outside my house what's going on in it. That's when the starting of uh, this, um, the issue of uh, relocate started to be taken up. Then we submit that um, all those issues to the village meeting. If the village can be aware of uh, one of the big issues about sea rising level, which has been touched by, especially the ones who are uh, staying uh, next to the seawall. Eh? Uh, then we take it up to the, um, to the village development meeting and uh, all the village development meeting accept those issues that we, if we can raise it up to the Prime Minister. Prime Minister. 
amani vai adorar sair nem a mundo vata me samba vir bem ganhar bem não me se o me rompo que aqui mam saca na lenha vou chorar brab sara mãe tu não sabe que mam sana ele rani dá na se o sara o ano toque daqui ni logo maior tu não sabe nem mineral de sorte e o tolo maior tu sabe que bem tendo um bichinho de matar só isso não matar só isso não é que na forma do outro que é matar só e o bicho não tendo um bichinho é mais ou menos é mais ou menos que é um bicho não é um bichinho o que é tudo logo isso tudo lhes me lhes me sangue ali com ele mal mexe na mexe na sangue me vai retar que me sangue lá com na na hora sangue vai ter que vir me mexe não lhe me vai correr que dongo essa pina na red na red zone que de tu o lo que de essa anda silva por essa red mac todo e que a sangue me vai mandar te que a ni ni sangue tu que quer na cor the pm told us it's better to move you guys rather than from building the sea walls that's when the issue was changed uh, from that um, meeting is with the Prime Minister. This is the seawall that have been built by the villagers since the 1970s and in subsequent years to protect themselves against the rising seas and the rising tides. When the Prime Minister visited in 2012, the villagers requested that this seawall be strengthened or a new one be built to act as a buffer against the rising tides that they were experiencing. However, the Prime Minister and his team recommended it would be easier, it would be uh, more economical, that the villagers relocate as a whole to a new location where they would be protected from climate change and the rising sea levels. I was born in the city of Kima Mundo, and I was born in the city of Kima Mundo. I was born in the city of Kima Mundo, and I was born in the city of Kima Mundo. I was born in the city of Kima Mundo. Once the decision was made to relocate, the project commenced in 2012 at a fast and furious pace. But the fast pace may have jumped the gun on a number of much needed requirements that needed to be put in place before relocation takes place. Tichos andando, na matangali, ora vita, na matangali otro que, ni tu matangali, me sa que tu vai otra que me sa que no vou no amigani, me corvo. Ya sandung satu orang di tahun dua kata dok. Yang kanga yang punya lengan cunga ni ni guna elok mai kini orang nama tebal. Sa on ngai kau turun koros. Sini orang dekat di orang turun mata kali. Merok kelar ni kimi mai sambil sekte kauji. Merok lagi balik takkan aku rum dari mata kini. Nama nama isi barat kini kau turun turang. Mata asam gori. Ayam rosaran kau rata kini dona lapan ikakan. Sini itu ikakan. Dan buat mata burung gori. Sana tu saya kena soso nelli puni. Dan bimbing tu kekini warai awan. When they brought the machines into the new site, there were mangroves and some other trees in from the shore. So they've cut it all the mangroves and all the trees there. So they bulldoze all the soil down from where the mangroves are. And, um, and after that work, there was no more mangroves and no, no more trees down there, yes. Fiji now has what is termed relocation guidelines, a framework to undertake climate change related relocation. The guideline states that in the pre-stage, government must ensure a comprehensive and inclusive planning process. Mechanisms must be put in place to ensure transparency and accountability together with a clear timetable and budget. Many of the guidelines now in place were not followed in Narikoso and the relocation remains incomplete eight years on. After the land was leveled and prepared for relocation in 2012 to a tune of $200,000, progress stalled for a while. In the meantime, various government departments visited Narikoso and found that rehabilitation needed to be done to mitigate the damage done in the initial clearing of the land. A one big team from the government officials, like the forestry, the agriculture, the SPC, the people from MRD, the Ministry of Vital KFS, they all come up to do the assessment for all these things. After the excavation, it's already been done. Eh? So, from the mineral resources uh, department side, they said that uh, the place that has uh, been done, like the, the site that's already been excavated, it's not been st uh, stabilized. So we need to take time before we move on to that land. Yes. 
So we need to plant uh, bativa grass, some some fruit trees there, some more uh, forest trees like that. Eh? So we need to do that before we have to move onto that uh, place. So I'm going to tell my tea. I'm going on. We must go to hotel. My tea. What's our blood here? The raya here. It's painful to the villagers that the decision to relocate led to further environmental damage. The destruction of the mangroves along the shoreline, the excavation and dynamiting of the mountain tops, and the resulting erosion that flowed out to the sea and damaged the coral reefs on which their livelihoods depend on, all fly against the principles of environmental friendly and people-centered climate change adaptation and mitigation. Unfortunately for Narikoso, the guidelines were established between 2016 to 2018, well after the project had commenced. Hence, some of the best practices were not put in place. Some of the lessons learned from Narikoso that would have been avoided if the relocation guidelines had been followed include issues such as community consultation, constant communication, ensuring the availability of financing, government responsibility, and community involvement. Nan rey dosa kana mati balu, ramai baru sa kana rey tabi. Oje sa man to sa kana sibiara. Ir sibiara to sa kana banua. Sinto tuwa tena kaki mbi na kata tuwa tena ibaru ibadori. Kime mi ano numo tuko me kau sa kana jalan sa kana idaki. Mengali trim tak kena banua. Mendarai ngai kian darai tisa kana dua, darai besa kana go idaki. Kime mi sinto ani tiabu sa kana irango na na bal. Na kian alago na kacabi la kon sa uci na. They should have checked uh, the other places because it's already been demarcated from the Itauke phase. Eh? Uh, and it's, uh, the, the two places that's already been demarcated, some of those places are better than the one that's uh, where the houses started to be being built right now. I'm standing now in the location of the new village, what is deemed a Korovo. Three years after the government gave the commitment to relocate the whole village, an economist was sent to Narikoso to weigh the costs and benefits of relocation. The study found that it would be costing the government money and government would lose out if they relocated the whole village. The study found that barriers to the relocation appeared to be a lack of finance resources and access to information covering community-based adaptation options. That the project would be a negative payoff for Fiji and this was mainly due in part to the decision to relocate being made before detailed assessments were carried out. The study called on government to ensure they adopted relocation guidelines and to allow for relocation only when it is the most efficient solution. After the study, new players came onto the scene to manage the relocation process, in particular the German Development Agency, GIZ, and a new proposal was put forward to only move some of the houses in the red zone or the most vulnerable area, not the whole village. Work commenced on building these seven houses for relocation, but progress was hampered by two cyclones, which caused severe and extensive damage to the newly built houses. In the village, differing views began to emerge about the relocation process and how it was being undertaken. In particular, that seven houses and families from one Matangali will be separated from the village. <laughs> From my view, we don't have to worry about that because it'll be only one Turani Koro, it'll be only one church here, only one chief here. So if we really don't feel that we're going to be split up because every village meeting will be attending it. And especially people will be coming and passing over the village, old village site and the new site before they entering their farms. So it's like they're just taking 
only in one place. So I've explained it to them. It's like we have just extend the village. As a mother, I believe that um, these uh, seven houses that's about to be relocated, uh, to me, I believe that uh, it's good for them to move up because of their kids. And uh, during high tide, we usually see the kids, they just walk around the house, almost swimming beside their houses because of the high tide. So to me, I believe that it's good. They should have brought up an awareness to the people before they've cut down the number of houses. Eh? So that we, could, we can understand what, what is the meaning of these changes. Yes, by telling them, no, it's not 17, it's likely seven. The move to just relocate seven houses from the initial 27 has not gone down well to some villages, even though some see it as a first phase of the relocation. It seems contradictory to them that a move to adapt to climate change, to relocate, to have buffer themselves against rising sea, sea tides and rising sea levels has now caused, to some extent, more disruption in dividing and moving only part of the village known as the red zone. <laughs> Task force team ni relocation gan lain, na ni corner kosu. Kita wajib ni mana ni sama ni i wanda buru cik guna na relocation gan lain. Kami kuni ada tali so na mata gali langgup aku kita mesti tahu ilu eh. Studies have highlighted that the case of Narikoso is important because village relocations will become more prevalent in Fiji and the Pacific as we become more vulnerable to the effects of climate change. The Narikoso experience provides an opportunity to learn from past mistakes and provides an insight into how effective relocation should take place going forward. As for now, the villages of Narikoso are still awaiting updates from both government and GIZ about the project. They are hoping to have a briefing and discussion about the project in the same hall where they made an agreement with government about relocation. We tried to get comments from both GIZ and government to balance this story. GIZ sent a background document and told us that we should have more information such as lessons learned at the expected completion of the seven relocated houses later in the year. Government was opposed for comments several times, but officials were delayed in getting approval to speak to us for almost six weeks before we advised them that we were going to air. The key lesson from Narikoso is that government relocation guidelines must be strongly adhered to for future projects to ensure relocation is done right in the future.